Hello everyone, I'm Tom. And since this coronavirus disruption started, I've been hosting this vlog to eat beef jerky and talk to you on the internet. I'm not a food critic, so the beef jerky part is silly and pointless. But this vlog has let me explore some fun ideas with you, especially regarding game design, and I plan to keep doing it. Today is the 15th of October, halfway through October of 2020, which means it's time to get out the vote, as you can see from this spiffy banner down here. Um, but I'd also like to talk about the fact that it's also the 50th episode! 50 episodes of inane, silly beef jerky video. What could be better in the year 2020? Well, a lot of things, but here we are. All right. Have I ever talked about the importance of voting? I think I may have, but let me discuss it again real quick and say that, well, gosh, it's important. Um, and one of the ways in which we appreciate the importance is to actually uh, vote. Uh, it's really easy to find out how to vote for your state. Go to betterknowaballot.com as John Locke asserted, people are by nature free, and voting is the natural right of the self-governed. We are the self-governed. We are not governed by a king. We threw off the yoke of a king. We said, rich, special people with good genes and, you know, blessed by God, and uh, I got royalty in my family going back X generations. We said at one point in our American history, we don't need any of that. We common, regular people can make a government for ourselves, by ourselves, of ourselves. And the root of that, since the beginning, has been voting and the right to vote. Um, that's why people fought so hard to get the right to vote for whoever they were. Um, and if they fought so hard and people fought so hard against it, it's not something trivial. So don't trivialize it. Vote. Use your vote. Vote today if you can. Did I mention voting? Yeah. Okay. So, but this is a, jer ver a jerky tasting vlog, which is why we talk about games. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about bosses. Now, this picture is from Monster Hunter World a recent video game, or I think one that's about to come out, but I'm pretty sure, no, it, just, it came out a year or so. Um, extremely popular, um, and the point is, is that basically all the monsters you fight are much, much bigger than you, and, and they're essentially all boss monsters. And I didn't want to, I didn't throw up this image to talk about Monster Hunter World, I threw up this image to talk about boss monsters. Boss monsters have been with us since practically the beginning of video games, um, the idea being that at the very end of the long level or to punctuate the end of a story or a story arc or uh, to uh, uh, as a gateway to going up in a character level to leveling up your character higher powers you must beat an extra special monster an extra hard monster um, and while that concept has been around for a very long time I have to attribute two things both Nintendo and the game genre shmups with really extending and exploring what a boss could mean, and more specifically what a boss fight could mean. Because the idea that boss fights have different stages, in other words, mo bosses uh, change their behavior as you reduce their health, or, or, or you know get them down to half health or a quarter health, suddenly they behave differently. Um, the idea that, that bosses uh, have patterns, that they attack in three different ways, one after the other, and that's predictable. Um, but the idea that bosses have unique attacks that are not anywhere else in the game, you know, all these interesting ideas come from, uh, from you know, progenitors, from certain games, and, and one of the earliest game genres to really uh, double down on that concept of bosses and sub-bosses were shmups, top-scrolling shooters of various kinds. Um, but then I think Nintendo, with its uh, with its clear design philosophy of handcrafting everything and polishing it to a perfect shine, 
was also uh, uh, responsible for popularizing bosses that were fun and interesting and unusual and complicated in all the ways that I just said, that they have patterned attacks, that those patterned attacks change over the life of the battle, um, and that, uh, um, yeah, those two things. So, uh, bosses are really interesting, I think, and in if you think about them, you, uh, you, you realize that they're there almost as a counterpoint to the non-boss enemies. And non-boss enemies actually come in lots of different flavors and, and powers, but it's very typical, especially in a game with a lot of bosses, that the enemies that are not bosses are trash, as they say, are very weak monsters that survive, uh, that don't survive long uh, when the players attack them. In fact, in uh, uh, when I back when I was playing Diablo and Diablo 2, I would joke that I really enjoyed a character build that could one-shot the trash. And by that I meant one single hit was all it took to destroy a regular monster. Um, uh, for some reason that's kind of fun. I think it's, it's definitely fun to have constant explosions or dying monsters all around you. Um, and, and again, shmups do that very well too. They're, in a shmup, there's always something exploding on the screen, uh, pretty much. And, uh, and there's something valuable about that. Even if you can't necessarily directly call it fun, you could certainly call it validation. The idea that, oh wow, there's explosions going on, the, the spaceships are blowing up constantly, and it's because I am powerful enough, I did the right things, I picked up the correct power-ups, and now I'm, you know, I'm being rewarded for being good with all this kinetic, explosive celebration of, you know, destruction. Um, but the bottom line is, is that it's always interesting to think about games from the point of view of you know, what are the bosses and how do you fight them and also very interesting to think about the games in, in terms of the enemies that are not bosses and how you fight them um, and um, one of the prototypes that I'm building right now is a game which is not unusual which has no trash monsters just boss monsters as far as the eye can see um, and that kind of makes weak boss monsters into trash monsters, but you, you, it's, it's philosophical. Um, and there, are, and this again, that I said it's not unusual because there are actually several, lots of games out there, uh, like Monster Hunter World, where there really aren't many, very many trash monsters, just a lot of bosses. Um, so, um, yeah, boss monsters—they're interesting. They're cool to think about. But there's another thing that's cool to think about, and that's uh, beef jerky, which is what the show is about. So, since it's the 50th episode, I was thinking initially, yeah, I'll go easy on myself, but then 50th episode, no, the fans out there, which is you, are going to want to watch me eat something horrible, or, or dangerous, or explosive, or bold. Um, so I dug around in my stuff, and honestly, I didn't set myself up for that. So, this is the best I could find. It's uh, Big Pork's Pork Jerky Spicy 3 Pepper. I don't know exactly how spicy it's going to be or exactly how much of these three peppers it's going to use, but this is the best I got in terms of being dangerously bold. So we're going to try it right now. Let's see here. Remember, it is Big Pork. Craft Pork Jerky. Mm. Smells like spicy jerky. Here's a nice piece. Let's give it a try. All right, here comes the spicy after kick. Yeah, well, definitely spicy. It's tasty, um, very salty. 
obviously for obvious reasons this pork jerky kind of is always going to taste a bit like bacon and this one does the peppers are there you can taste the actual black pepper and the heat is there Whew. I feel it up to the roof of my mouth Woohoo! definitely hot definitely peppery I think that uh, it does what it says on the tin <sighs> all right well I'm not saying anything um, alien or, or outrageously new but definitely again it says what it says on the tin spicy three pepper I taste the pepper and I taste the spicy uh, and it's a uh, craft pork jerky, and that tastes like craft pork jerky. It's good because it's not too shoe leathery, and it's not too you know kind of wet and mushy. It's right in the sweet spot of texture. So all in all, pretty good. All right, let's open the mail bag um, where I look at responses or or uh, comment posts on the YouTube video or on the Facebook page when I post it there. Uh, and once again. What we really got as a whole is Adam Para responding and telling me, thanks for showing us the evils of gotcha games. When they first came out, I spent money on fake stuff. I then said to myself, you don't need to do this. And he also says, cool ideas for the delivery sim. So yeah, Adam, um, did I say evils? I know you put, you put air quotes around them. Well, I did air quotes. You actually wrote actual quotes. So maybe you were joking about the evil part. Is gambling evil? That's really way beyond the scope, not only of this silly little beef jerky video, but really honestly beyond the scope of, you know, game development. Um, it's a much bigger topic about humans and how they work and how we go about thinking about using and taking advantage of our knowledge of how they work um, yeah me myself I'm very I'm what you would call conservative about gambling as a whole in society um, it just seems obvious to me for instance that the uh, the lottos that the states run are gigantic worthless scams and taxes upon poor people um, they never should have been implemented. They never should have been made legal, and all states should get rid of them. They do nothing good for anybody. Um, it, you know, almost all states at some point have had some advertising push that says, "Oh, but this lotto will be really good for the school funding." Turns out, the schools don't get any real funding from it, so it's all a giant lie and a big, you know, a big mess. It's all pointless foolishness, and you shouldn't be listening to those. Nobody should be listening to those those voices, which I do think are, for better for for better or worse, they definitely only they're, they're scams. They don't have Americans' best interests at heart. They only have their their scammy bank bank account interests at heart. Um, but. There's absolutely something to be said for consenting adults willing to gamble their own money. Um, there are just too many people out there who I think don't just understand that that's a way to have fun and a way to have challenge and a way to have excitement. Um, but it's it, it is as fundamental and old as things like say alcohol um, which completely incidentally I also think is a blight upon humanity that we'll never get rid of because it's fundamental to humanity itself um, but but yeah I, I think it's very possible that gambling as kind of an essential you know roll the dice game of chance money changes hands is so built into humanity that whether it's good for us or not there's no getting rid of it and I I don't feel like it's my place to, to, to attempt to get rid of it for everyone else uh, but I know that 
I think that there are better ways to play a game than to lose 20 bucks on a slot machine. Uh, but that's just me. Um, and Adam said, cool ideas for the delivery sim. I'm glad you, you thought so, Adam. That's why I was doing that little game of, you know, how about a, how, you know, name a, uh, or design a video game with one simple, you know, fill in the blank step. Uh, it's because, among other things, it's really good to, um, to have an idea for a game. Oh, oh, it's about bats, and these bats, they fly at supersonic speeds, and that'll be cool, and they got lasers. It's good then to actually reach out and hit the internet and hit Steam and hit every resource you can and try to find if somebody else has already made a game about supersonic laser bats. Um, because if they have, that's actually not a reason to stop thinking about your supersonic laser bat idea. It's actually a, a, a reason to, to rejoice because somebody else also thought it was a good idea. So that probably means it's not a bad idea. Um, so, you know, don't, don't give up your dreams just because somebody already did it. Somebody already did it, but they didn't do it the way you were going to do it. And the fact is, is that if somebody really liked their game, they're going to go back out there and say, I wonder if there are any other supersonic laser bat games out there. And if you put out one too, they'll naturally go, ooh, let's try that. So, just because other people have done it already doesn't mean you can't do it too. All right, so... Um, once more into the voting breach, dear friends, let's talk about voting. Um, what is this? <laughs> so Gary Olson quoted, a quote from Gary Olson is that, without the vote of a free man, I am but a slave without power to make decisions. Nobody wants to be a slave. So vote vote absolutely go out there make a plan get out and vote today if you can all right that's enough about me and Bobo voting but it's the year it's the time um thanks for watching uh one more time this craft pork jerky spicy three pepper lived up to the box i would not say it's the craziest or weirdest uh jerky i've ever tasted but it's absolutely spicy and absolutely can taste the pepper. Uh, so if you like pork jerky, I would say the, 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 and you like spicy and three pepper, this is the stuff for you. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this 50th episode of my silly and meaningless beef jerky vlog. I know I did, but I'm not going to stop here. We're going to go steam on and we'll see how far we get. I hope you join me next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.